Hello everyone, it's good to have you back. Masters of the Air's second half adopts a different approach from previous war dramas starring Harrison Ford and Steven Spielberg, exploring life at a prison camp. Despite this change in storytelling, the series has been able to address significant historical events, such as the well-known tale of Stalag Luft III's The Great Escape. The Great Escape, which was mentioned in Masters of the Air Episode 7, was precisely what it sounds like. A valiant attempt to break out from the prisoners of war camp that ultimately had detrimental ramifications on both the prisoners and the escapee. Episode 7 of Masters of the Air included a mention to The Great Escape, constructing a radio. Gail Buck Clevin, John Bucky Egan, and the other prisoners from the 100th Bomb Group are taking a stand against Stalag Luft III. Through a series of covert operations, Buck manages to assemble a radio that provides them with real-time information about the fight. This becomes an issue, though, when they find out that prisoners of war from the British side of the camp manage to escape through tunnels. The German officers will now be even more vigilant, endangering the safety of everyone else. Most British soldiers imprisoned at Stalag Luft III completed the year-long project known as the Great Escape. Roger Bushell, the leader of a Royal Air Force squadron, came up with the scheme. Tunnels served as the foundation for the Great Escape. More than 600 prisoners of war collaborated to covertly excavate tunnels out of Stalag Luft III between March 1943 and March 1944. The men succeeded even though the camp was intentionally built on sandy land to make tunnel construction challenging. After all, they had three tunnels, Tom, Dick, and Harry. To be clear, these were no simple tunnels. Every tunnel had staging posts, an air pump, and workshops where supplies could be stored. Small, obscure openings in specific huts at Stalag Luft three housed the start of the tunnels. The idea behind digging three tunnels was to ensure that, even in the unlikely event that the Germans discovered one, they would remain unaware that two others were being constructed. In the end, this plan was successful when Tom the tunnel was detonated. The Great Escape was supposed to happen in the summer, but a visit from the Gestapo to Titan security caused it to happen in March instead. The Harry Tunnel was used by several of the prisoners from Stalag Luft III to sneak out on the day of the Great Escape, March 24, 1944. Their escape was hindered by the entryway being frozen. Furthermore, it was discovered that the tunnel's exit was susceptible to the nearby guard tower because it did not quite make it past the tree line. Still, in the wee hours of the morning, the soldiers made their way out of the tunnel. After an escapee was forced to surrender after being discovered via the guard tower, their operation was eventually shut down. Eventually, the Harry Tunnel allowed 76 inmates to escape Stalag Luft III. They then toured the countryside or walked to a nearby train station. This is a far lesser number than Bushell had in mind when he created the Great Escape. His original goal was to free 200 prisoners of war. One of the main causes of the Great Escape's meticulous and effective planning was this number. But this number also caused issues. Only 200 of the 600 men who labored on the Great Escape's tunnels were able to escape. Merit was the deciding factor for the escapees. Of the 600 soldiers, two groups were formed. The individuals in the first group, referred to as serial offenders, stood the best chance of making an escape. They spoke German and wore civilian clothes and realistic papers. The individuals who were believed to have worked the hardest on the tunnels were also included in the initial batch. The second category, known as hard arsers, consisted of those who didn't know German or had poor papers. They had to travel at night in order to avoid being discovered after being selected by drawing lots. The Great Escape's happiness is dashed in Masters of the Air when a German commander admits that 50 of the escapees perished. Regretfully, historical accounts of this sort do exist. The Stalag Luft three authorities looked into how many prisoners had escaped and how elaborate this strategy was after learning about the Great Escape. Adolf Hitler was ordered not to kill them all since Allied camps held German prisoners of war and retaliation might occur at any moment. The most famous incident that took place at Stalag Luft III was the Great Escape, which had tragic results despite being a miraculous and amazing operation. After the Great Escape, the camp was placed on high alert, not to mention that the majority of the escapees were apprehended and executed. Things got a whole lot harder. The camp's officers had to punish rule breakers more severely in order to prevent embarrassing situations in the future. This implies that in the Masters of the Air universe, Buck and Bucky's radio poses a significant risk that could ultimately result in their deaths. The most challenging months were probably those that separated the Great Escape from the collapse of Stalag Luft III. Even while the camp provided its soldiers with a good deal of comforts, things got harder after the Great Escape. The prisoners of war had to keep their heads down if they were to survive. Fortunately, the camp was closed in less than a year, allowing many of the prisoners who were there to return to safety. But Masters of the Air is probably going to examine not just the Great Escape's amazing legacy, but also its aftermath. 
Hitler ultimately gave the order to execute over half of the fugitives. This translates to 50 males out of 76. Roger Bushell, the leader of the Great Escape, was one of these killed escapees. In addition, a wide variety of nationalities, including British, Canadian, Polish, Australian, Argentinian, South African, French, and more, were among the dead escapees. While some of the other imprisoned escapees were moved to neighboring prisoners of war camps or concentration camps, 17 of them were brought back to Stalag Luft III. The three who were able to flee eventually found refuge in allied or neutral nations. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.